I'm right here in the Global Prayer Center where hundreds of people join us on a weekly basis and thousands of people join us online for one of the largest prayer meetings in the world. Now, if you would like to submit a prayer request, you can go to perrystone.org slash pray and you will see the form there to fill out to submit your prayer request. That will be reviewed this week and your prayer request will be aired the following week. So as we go into this prayer meeting together, we hope that you will find a good place to pray and join us as all of these intercessors from around the world join together to pray for one another. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today here at the Global Prayer Center where we are praying for you as we pray for the world, the country, and many other prayer requests that come into us each week. If you would like to be a partner with us or help us in this task, we have a way that you can give. You can go to perrystone.org and donate there, or here on your screens, there is a place where you can give, and that will help to continue to support the Global Prayer Center. It helps take care of the cost of the facility, the staff, and all of the live streaming so that we can continue to bring this to you and to the nations every single week. Thank you for joining one of the largest and most powerful prayer meetings in the world today. Thank you for being a part of this. God bless you, and we love you. I'm right here in the Global Prayer Center where hundreds of people join us on a weekly basis and thousands of people join us online for one of the largest prayer meetings in the world. Now, if you would like to submit a prayer request, you can go to perrystone.org slash pray, 
and you will see the form there to fill out to submit your prayer request. That will be reviewed this week and your prayer request will be aired the following week. So as we go into this prayer meeting together, we hope that you will find a good place to pray and join us as all of these intercessors from around the world join together to pray for one another. God bless you. Thank you for joining us here at the Global Prayer Center. We have people arriving right now for prayer and this room is beginning to fill up with intercessors. We're gonna go before the Lord in just a few moments in prayer. We hope that you will get out your Bible, maybe get out your oil or your prayer shawl, however you love to pray and find you a place for the next hour as we approach the throne of God together. at the Global Prayer Center, and we're ready to pray. We've got a room full of intercessors. They're still coming in all across the room, and we've got prayer requests already on the screens. And uh, we're believing tonight for miracles. We have some people that have come for miracles, and at some point in time in this prayer time, we're going to be calling them forward, and all of us here, all of you online, as well as those that are here. And some of you watching online may need a miracle in your life. Um, we have one pastor here in particular who had just had a huge brain tumor removed, but they weren't able to get all of it. And we're going to pray and believe that God's going to eradicate the rest of this. It's a, it's a terminal diagnosis, but we know the giver of life. And we're going to speak resurrection. We're going to speak against uh, the, these brain cells or these cancerous cells in his body and believe for total healing. And so if you know someone that has this same issue, if you know someone, call them up right now. Tell them to get on the phone. If you know someone that's struggling with cancer, because we we're going to actually go after that particular issue, along with many other issues that the body of Christ is dealing with. I tell you, this is a season where uh, we're coming into the, the, the day of Pentecost not too long from now, where we're going to see, uh, I believe, a great harvest begin for the body of Christ. But man, there's some warfare going on, not only in the country, but in the body of Christ. And uh, I know in a lot of ministries, I know a lot of ministries under attack, a lot of people's health that's under attack. You know, there's a, there is a difference in the rhythm of life that gets off and when you see an attack. Because the attack comes in waves and it comes against people. And it's, it's not just the same as, you know, someone's not feeling well, or they happen to get sick. Every time that happens, it's not an attack. But you can tell when the enemy is attacking because it comes in various forms and in various waves. 
And so that also means that you're getting close to winning. So that's the encouraging part that I want you to know, that when you see these battle lines being drawn, that means that you're pushing back the gates of hell and that you are winning. So by the, by the authority of the name of Jesus and by the blood of Jesus, we're declaring tonight that some people are going to be set free in their bodies and particularly that some people are going to be healed uh, of cancer. We have, you know what? There is no difference in having faith for cancer than having faith for a common cold. There's no difference. It is God that heals, and it doesn't take any more effort for the Lord to heal a major disease than something minor. Sometimes it's because in our faith we just think of it differently. Like, listen, nothing is too big for God. The heaven is his throne, the earth of his footstool. So think about that. Think about the size of God, and there is no problem too big for God. Listen, um, Tommy Combs is going to be coming to uh, Ramp OCI here in next month and doing a healing, uh, healing service for us. Tommy is seeing some radical types of, of miracles right now. As a matter of fact, he's not the only one. There are people that are actually seeing entire limbs grow out where they had an arm cut off, and God is restoring arms and fingers and hands again. I mean, I've heard of those kind of miracles back, at the, back in the Azusa Street Revival and the healing revivals. I have, I've seen God heal, and I've, I know that God heals, and I've seen miracles after miracles. But I want to tell you something. When you start seeing uh, eyeballs coming back in and eardrums coming back in. When you start seeing limbs grow out, that is a realm of the miraculous that we need to tap into. That is signs and wonders. So God is moving like that. That's not history. That's something going on right now. So we're going to believe tonight for that level of miracles. We're going to start tonight as we always do by saying the Lord's Prayer. So I'm going to ask you to stand all over the room. And we're just going to begin by, by saying the Lord's Prayer together. And then we're going to do the first part of that prayer where it says, Hallowed be thy name. And after this, we're just going to enter into a time of worship. So we're just going to thank God and bless him. And then we're going to lead you in prayers. We're going to, we're going to actually, we're going to pray for revival tonight. We're going to pray for families tonight. And we're going to focus on healing of the body and that's how we're going to spend a lot of our time focused on that. So we want you to join us. Now remember, this is a spirit-filled prayer meeting. Walk around, pray, go to the altars, come and kneel however you need to pray, whatever, however you feel comfortable. Stir this room up. Stir the faith up in this room. I hope that God lays it on at least one person's heart to do a Jericho march around here. And that, that doesn't mean everybody has to, but if, the, if that spirit comes in, you walk around this room seven times and claim victory. Just walk, just do a circle seven times and claim the victory. I've done that so many times in my life. How many of you know sometimes you have to do the ridiculous to see the, the, the miraculous? Sometimes that's what God asks you to do. We talked about that on Tuesday night. All right, let's say the Lord's Prayer together and come into agreement on this prayer as we begin our prayer meeting tonight. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now let's do hallowed be thy name. Let's just hallow the name of the Lord for a while. Just worship him all over this room. Father, we come before you. We glorify you and we praise you. We want to thank you, God, because you have given us, you have not given us a spirit of fear, but you've given us a power and love and a sound mind. I want to thank you, Father, because, Lord, those things that intimidate us do not intimidate you. I want to thank you, Father, that you've made provision through the atonement of Jesus Christ for our healing. For you said that he was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquity, the chastisement of our peace was on him, and by his stripes we're healed. I thank you, Lord, that we can plead the blood of Jesus, for it was the 
the blood of the spotless Lamb of God that not only paid for our sins, but also conquered death, hell, and the grave. I want to thank you, Lord, for the resurrection, because at the resurrection, you conquered every spirit. You've opened the doorway to heaven and set the captives free. I want to thank you, Lord, that you said that our sins were nailed to the cross and that when those sins were nailed to the cross, Lord, you said that you made a public spectacle of every demon triumphing over them. So, God, I thank you for that. God, I thank you that you're omnipotent. I thank you that you're omnipresent. I thank you, God, that you're, that you're omniscient. I thank you, Lord, that you know our needs before we pray. God, even when we cannot articulate our needs, you can, we can groan in the Spirit and pray in the Spirit. And the Spirit of God prays in the perfect will of God for our life. And I thank you for that, Lord. Lord, I thank you, God, because we are fearfully and wonderfully made. In the expressed image of God, God, we are not forsaken. We are not cast down. We are not destroyed. But God, I thank you, Father, that we have hope in you, that we have eternal life in you. I thank you, Lord, that the Spirit of God has given us the power to overcome this world, the things of this world, and to walk victoriously in this life. I thank you, Father, God, that you have given us the gifts of the Holy Spirit, that we can minister to the body of Christ. I thank you, God, for the gift of faith. I thank you, God, for the gift of healing. I thank you, God, for the gift of tongues and the interpretation of tongues. I thank you, God, for the gift of the word of knowledge and the gift of wisdom. Father, I thank you, God, for the gifts of administration and the gifts of help. God, I thank you for every spiritual gift that has been endowed to the body of Christ to allow us to be not the walking wounded body of Christ, but an army on our feet that that the gates of hell cannot prevail against. Father, I thank you for the word of God. God, I thank you that your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. God, I will hide your word in our heart that we will not sin against you. I thank you, Father, that you sent forth your word and you healed your people. I thank you, Lord, that this word is like a sword in our mouth and we can apply it to every circumstance of life. I thank you, Lord, that the word can heal us and the word can set us free. I thank you, God, that the word can save us and the word can deliver us. I thank you, Father, God, that we can come before you believing, God, that you are doing miraculous things that we can't even understand and we can't even see. I thank you, God, that revival is on its way. I thank you, Father, that you are sending a revival that will sweep this earth and our sons and our daughters will prophesy. I thank you, God, that it's a revival that's coming to the young and the old. It's coming to every country and every language. I thank you, God, that the glory of God is going to be seen and Habakkuk's prophecy will come to pass, that the knowledge of the glory of the Lord will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. I thank you, God, that we are not helpless. I thank you, Lord, that we are not hopeless. But I thank you, God, that we put our trust in you and that because of that you are our deliverer. You are our savior. You are our baptizer. God, you are the one God that holds us. You are our comforter when we're weary. God, we say as Joel said, let the weak say I am strong. And God, we declare our strength comes from you. We declare that the joy of the Lord is our strength. God, you said in your word that weeping may endure for the night, but that joy is coming in the morning and we declare Father that joy is coming God for whoever is depressed joy is coming for that person that can't get their breakthrough joy is coming we declare that joy is coming in the mighty name of Jesus we thank you God that you are on your throne and you are high and lifted up and your train fills the temple we thank you God that we do not have to worry and stand on the outside but we can approach 
approach the throne of God with boldness that we can come boldly before the throne of grace to obtain mercy. I thank you, God, that you have given us hope. I thank you, God, that you've given us help. You are a very present help in the time of need. God, you send us who we need when we need it. You send us what we need when we need it. God, you are our resource. You are, God, you are the one who gives us whatever we need to, to do the will of the Lord. God, we thank you, God, for the prosperity of our soul. We thank you, God, that our soul is not hopeless. But God, we thank you, Lord, that you have given us tools in our hands through the word of God, through songs in our heart, through prayer, through fasting. We thank you, Father, that you have opened up the windows of heaven and poured out blessings that we can't even contain. God, I ask you, Lord, to remember our alms, remember our tithes, the way you did to Cornelius, Father. I pray, God, that you will remember each time we've given to further the cause of ministry. God, remember the giving of our, the sweat of our brow, the giving of our labor of love. Father, remember that, Father, and lay your hand upon the people. God, I declare what Nehemiah said, that the good hand of God is upon us to build the kingdom of God. So, Lord, I declare, Lord, that because the good hand of God is upon us, good things will happen. God, I declare what you said in Psalm 23, that goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our life. So, God, we are looking for goodness to happen. We are looking for mercy to happen. God, as we preached and taught on Tuesday night, God, we we look at the mountain in front of us and we shout grace, grace to that mountain. It shall be a plain. We shout grace, grace to our circumstances, grace into our battles, grace into our struggles. God, we declare that in Jesus' name. And God, we declare, God, that you are already in front of us. You are already our rear guard. God, we understand, Lord, that the battles we're walking into, we're walking toward you. God, we don't have to worry about the enemy because you are in front of us. You are our shield. You are our buckler. You are our high tower. And the righteous run into you and they are saved. So, Lord, let us keep following you. Keep putting light upon our pathway. Let us follow you, Father, because as we follow you, that path will lead to victory. And this long and winding road will turn to gold. We know that, Lord. Let us keep our eyes on the prize. Let us keep our eyes on heaven. Let us keep our eyes on the, on, on the promises of God. They are a yes and amen. We give you praise for it, Lord, and we glorify your name, and we thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Can we just begin to clap our hands in the Lord and bless his name? Oh, God, we praise you. We bless your name, Lord. Come on, shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Give God praise in this room right now, Lord. We lift you up, Lord. We lift you up, Father. We glorify you and we praise your name. We praise your name. Hallelujah. 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 We glorify you, Lord. Father, I just thank you, Lord, that we can come together as one mind and one accord, Father, Lord, to seek you in your ways tonight, Father, Lord. Father, I thank you, Lord, for every firehouse, Lord, that has joined us, Father, Lord. Father, Lord, there is many in the body of Christ right now, Father, Lord. Lord, that need a touch from you, Lord. Lord, that are sick in their body, Father, Lord. Lord, your word says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but you deliver us from them all, Father, Lord. Lord, that you are the restorer of our health, Father, Lord. Lord, that you said in your word, we are fearfully and wonderfully made, Father, Lord. And Lord, that you finished it all on the cross, Father, Lord, that by your stripes we we were healed, Father, Lord. So, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, God, Father, Lord, I speak now over the body, Father, Lord, that it's been afflicted, Father, Lord, that's down, Father, Lord. Lord, I pray right now, Father, Lord, and I bind every sickness and disease that no weapon formed against them shall prosper, that cancer has to go in the name of Jesus. We bind that spirit now in the name of Jesus, and we curse it out of their body now in the name of Jesus and we command healthy cells to begin to replicate in their body now and Lord we just ask you for healing from the top of their head to the soles of their feet we speak the blood of Jesus is against you now in the name of Jesus and that you
you have to flee. You have no right, no authority, for greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And I declare right now that every sickness and disease has to leave. You are invading the temple of the Holy Ghost, and you have no right, and you have to leave now in the name of Jesus. So we take the authority granted to us and delegated us by Jesus, for he says he has given us the authority to trample serpents and scorpions and over every scheme of the enemy, and nothing by any means shall harm us. So, Lord, I ask you now, Lord, to fulfill your word, Lord. Lord, that your word would go forth with healing in its wings, Father Lord, that you would touch them, Father Lord. Lord, every ailment, Father Lord, there is nothing too big for you, God. And, Lord, we just speak the blood of Jesus is against it now in the name of Jesus. For every name has to bow to the name of Jesus, for there is no other but the name of Jesus. So I speak the name of Jesus now over every sickness and disease, and you have to bow to the name of Jesus now in Jesus' name. And, Lord, I thank you, God, Lord, that you are a God of peace, Father Lord. So, Lord, I speak peace over your body right now, Father Lord. Lord, that the storms of life, we speak peace, be still, Father Lord. Lord, I pray and I bind every spirit, Lord, that is attempting, Father Lord, to attack the body of Christ, Father Lord, to sow division, God. Lord, I pray, Lord, that an awakening would come to the body of Christ, God. Lord, I pray an Issachar anointing, Father Lord, for your people, Lord, that they not only understand the times, Father Lord, but, Lord, that they know how to move in the times, Father Lord. Lord, that just like they knew, Father Lord, though they understood the seasons, Father Lord, but, Lord, they had understanding, Lord. So, Lord, I ask you right now, Father Lord, that you would give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you, that you would open the eyes of our heart, Lord, to understand and know your ways, God. And, Lord, I pray, Lord, that we would be rooted and grounded in love, Father Lord. Lord, that we would know the depths, the height, Father Lord, of your love, Father Lord, and Lord, and your calling, Lord, of what you have called us to do in this hour, Lord. Lord, to step out, Father Lord. Lord, I pray, Lord, Lord, that we would move the way that you move, Father Lord. Lord, that we would move like the wind wants to move, God. Lord, we pray, Father Lord, for order and alignment of your word now in Jesus' name. Lord, that everything hidden, it shall be revealed according to your word, Father Lord. So, Lord, I ask you, Lord, Lord, that you would awaken, Father Lord, and bring to light, Father Lord, everything that's hidden, Father Lord. Lord, let it come to your marvelous light, Father Lord. And, Lord, I pray, Lord, Lord, that your sons and daughters would arise, Father Lord, that they would take their place in the authority that you have granted in this hour, Lord, to begin to speak your word, Father Lord, into situations, God. Lord, that they would not be bowing down, Father Lord, but, Lord, that they would stand up, Father Lord, and speak your word, Lord. And, Lord, I pray, Lord, over your body right now, Lord, Lord, that they would know the identity, Father Lord, that they are sons and daughters, Father Lord, Lord, that they've been predestined, Father Lord, for what, what Jesus did on the cross, God. And, Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you sent Jesus, Father Lord, and you set him up on high, Lord, and you put every authority, every demonic power under his feet, Lord. And I thank you, God, Lord, that you have made the sons and daughters, Father Lord, to be your hands and feet, Father Lord. And so, Lord, if everything's under your feet, that means even to the lowest Christian, it's under our feet now. For Ephesians says that you have raised us up even when we were sinners, that you raised us up and seated us in heavenly places, a right, right side of Jesus, and we are on the right hand, which means it's the authority of God. For you have given us the authority, Lord, to speak your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Um, I think we just have to right now just be reminded of who we are in the body of Christ. The Bible says that David encouraged himself in the Lord. We're not relying on the Lord. He already knows what he's done for, but we're, sometimes we have to remind ourselves and remind the enemy 
who we are in Christ in the name of Jesus. So we're not coming to time with prayers just to beg, but we're decreeing and declaring who we are in the name of Jesus. It's already a finished work. Hallelujah, God. Right now in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you, Lord, that these are not just going to be words, Lord, that, God, we just we just sometimes go over them casually, Lord, or, God, just haphazardly, Lord. But, Lord, I declare that your body will be reminded tonight, Lord, that who they are in Jesus, Lord. Your word says that we're seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus, God, and that we're above and not beneath, Lord, that we're the head and not the tail, Lord, that everywhere the sole of our foot treads, Lord, we possess, God, that it says past tense, that we died and our life is now hidden with Christ in God, Lord. Your word says powerful statements like God as Jesus is, so are we in this world. It's present tense, Lord. We're seated in heaven heavenly places with Christ Jesus, Lord. Jesus, you said all authority and power has been given unto you both in heaven and on earth. I declare over you, body of Christ, arise, because that which you bind on earth is bound in heaven, and that which you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. Hallelujah. You're not a coward. You're a conqueror. You're not defeated. You're victorious. Yeah, the blood of Jesus Christ is around you, and it hedges you ten like a Joe one ten had your protection. I declare your hand is to the plow and you will not look back. Oh, thank you, Jesus, that who the sun sets free is free indeed. You're not bound, but you're free in the name of Jesus. Lord, I declare, like Dr. Cutshaw said the other night, if we want to see some, sometimes we have to say some, that we decree a thing and watch it be established. Jesus, you said with your words, you'll either be justified or or you'll be condemned. So, Lord, right now, we just release the power of our lips, and we say we're justified. Romans 8, Romans 8 says those he has justified, he has glorified. And if the same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead dwells on the inside of you, then that who quickens your mortal bodies, he will also rise you up and strengthen you when you need help and to find mercy in your time of need. Jesus, you are tempted in all points as we were yet without sin. So we have a high priest who ever lives to intercede for us. Oh, if anyone's dealing with sickness right now, there's no distance in the spirit, even those that are on home. Hallelujah, I believe it. If you're in a wheelchair, rise up right now. If you can't bend over, bend over and touch your toes right now. If you have, I just feel like the Lord's here on neck problems. In the name of Jesus, begin to move your neck. And you'll see that the power of God is touching you now, God. We thank you, Lord, that for this summer, even our small groups will turn into revival services, Lord. That, Lord, everywhere we go, we're going to represent the kingdom of God. For the kingdom of God, suffering violence and the violence taken by force, Lord. We declare that you continue to anoint Dr. B's voice, Lord, for this summer, God. Every word that you want him to speak, Lord. Every prayer that you want him to pray, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that he's going forth in the power of the Spirit, Lord, and for the dreams, Lord, and the words that you have given him. We stand behind him, Lord. We stand beside him, Lord, and hold up his hands just as Aaron and her did to Moses, God. We thank you for it right now, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. not desperate enough for a move of God in this land. So Lord, we cry right now in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, would you come again like you did in Acts chapter 2, God. Oh Lord God, would you send your fire, Lord. God, would you send your wind on this nation. God, we're not desperate enough for your move, Lord. So God, we're asking you, Lord, to pour out your spirit on us once again, Lord, like you did in the book of Acts, Lord Jesus. Oh Father God, I pray for that you would send forth laborers into the field, Lord God. Oh, send forth laborers into the field, Matthew chapter 9. Father God, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Oh, Lord God, would you make this house a house full of laborers, Jesus. Oh, Lord God, would you equip our hands with a sickle, Lord, that we would go out to a lost and a dying world, Jesus, and be the hands and feet of Jesus. God, let us not rest. God, let us not relent until we see the fullness of the kingdom of God on the earth in the name of Jesus. God, we won't wait another generation, Lord. God, we're not going to wait until another generation comes. But God, we're taking this thing by force.
force, Jesus. God, we're taking this thing by the authority of the power of God. Lord, not by might and not by power, Lord, but it's going to be by your spirit, Lord. God, I thank you, Lord, that we're going to advance in a season of comfort and in a season of rest, God. That it won't weary our bodies, Lord God, that we won't be worn out. But God, it'll be by your spirit and by your spirit alone, Lord Jesus. So God, send forth laborers into the field, Lord God, because we need revival in this nation, Lord. God, we need an awakening in this nation, Lord God. And I pray, Lord God, that, that we would send forth laborers, God, that we would be laborers, Lord, until like Revelation says, Lord, until the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ Jesus. Lord God, we're not going to stop until it's the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ Jesus. So, Lord God... We're letting you do all the work, Father. God, it's not going to be by our hand, Lord. But I pray that the Holy Spirit would get all of the glory, Jesus. That the Holy Spirit would get all the glory, Father God. Lord, I pray that you would invade families, Lord. I pray that you would invade families, Lord. God, let there be family revival, Lord. Oh, Lord God, I pray that if we rebuild the family altar, Lord God, that you would pour out your fire upon it, Lord, just like you did with Elijah, Lord. God, if we rebuild the family altar, Lord, I pray that you would pour out your fire on it, God. Oh, Lord God, that we would even spiritually pour water upon it, Lord, that it would look dead, that it would look impossible, Lord. But by the spirit of the living God, it would be a spectacle for all to see, Lord God. Place us on a Mount Carmel spiritually, Lord God, that those around us could see the glory of the living Jesus coming down out of the heavens and dwelling among us, Lord. Oh, God, we give you glory for what you're going to do. God, in advance, we give you glory for what you're going to do, Lord. But, God, we give you glory that there's glory now, Lord. We give you glory that there's glory now, God. We don't have to tarry for the glory, Lord, but, God, it's here and it's now. And I pray that you would open our eyes to see the glory now, God. God, let us see the glory in our neighbors, Lord. God, let us see the glory in the homeless people on the street. God, let us see the glory in the drug addicts, Lord. Oh, Jesus. God, let us see the glory, Father God, in the backslidden Christian, God. God, let us see the glory all around us, God. And equip our hands and equip our feet, Lord God, to go and be the hands and feet of Jesus, Lord. Because we're not desperate enough for revival, God. God, break us, Lord, until we see this thing in its fullness, God. God, break us until we see this thing in its fullness, Jesus. God, we're not content with church, Lord. God, we're not content with services, God. But I pray that you would pour out your spirit, Lord, and do things that eye has not seen. God, ear has not heard. God, nor has it ever even come into people's minds, Lord. God, do things exceedingly abundantly above. Lord, you're the Ephesians 3.20 God, Lord. Go above what we expect. God, even go above what we're praying for and believing for right now. Oh, Jesus. I just hear heaven saying right now, Lord, that we don't even have to convince God. We don't have to, we don't have to manipulate the situation. But heaven is agreeing with us for this. Oh, Lord God, so we just partner with you for this, Jesus. God, we don't have to convince you, but God, we come alongside you, Lord. Oh, Lord God, it was in your heart for awakening, Lord, before it was ever in our hearts, Jesus. So, God, we co-labor with the Father, Lord. God, we co-labor with you, Lord God, to see a generation turned upside down for the glory of God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, I come into agreement with these prayers that have already been prayed. Lord, I ask you right now, I'm hearing in my spirit that the body of Christ needs to cleanse our hearts. Lord, what you're bringing to us, a fresh fire, a fresh wind, a fresh oil, cannot dwell in, in corrupt vessels. It cannot dwell in dirty vessels. So I pray, God, right now that the body of Christ, you, God, you said that judgment begins at the house of God. Lord, I know that healing must begin in the home and in the house of God. So I pray, Lord, that you'll begin to remind us of any circumstance in our life that we still have any unforgiveness in us. God, wherever that may be, Lord, if it's 20 years old, if it's something we've buried, if it's a person, God, that we need to forgive, that we haven't forgiven, I pray, God, that we will rend our hearts before you and we would cleanse our hearts, Father. God, you said, who can ascend to the hill of the Lord? Only he who has clean hands and a pure heart. So I pray, God, that you will purify our hearts, cleanse our hearts, Father. Lord, if there's anything inside of us that is hindering us from understanding your ways and your will. God, if there's anything inside of us that is hindering us from being blinded by the will of God and the light of the glorious gospel, I pray, God, that you will eradicate
create that in us. Convict us, Lord. God, I pray for conviction for the body of Christ. God, that we would come before you empty. We would come before you broken. We would come before you with a contrite spirit. Lord, that we would come before you, Lord, rending our hearts, Lord. God, I pray, God, that your people would cry out for forgiveness first in the house of God. God, how can we pray for forgiveness for our land if we're still harboring any unforgiveness in our own lives? So I pray, God, that you will begin to speak to the body of Christ and you'll begin to purify our hearts in the body of Christ. God, if there's anyone, God, anyone that we have any issues with, I pray, God, that you will cleanse us from it, heal us from it, Lord. God, we want to see your glory. We want to see your power. We want to come along beside the will of God, the plan of God. So, Lord, I ask you, Lord, to cleanse us, Lord, to cleanse us, that there'll be nothing between us and you. There'll be nothing between the moving of the Holy Spirit and what you're doing in the body of Christ. So, God, let us come into agreement with you, but you are a holy God. So, Lord, let us come into agreement with a holy God as a holy people. God, you said that we were a peculiar people, a holy nation, a royal priesthood. Let us walk that out. Let us walk in that anointing. God, I pray, God, that there will be no flies in our ointment, but, Lord, that we would walk in a pure, holy oil, a fresh anointing, God, that flows from the throne room. God, something that bubbles out of us. Lord, there's a, re there's a reason that you said the Holy Spirit was springing up in us because it's the spring that purifies. It's the spring that cleanses. God, there's a reason that you said that out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water because it's the flow that purifies us. So God, cleanse our mind. God, if we've been watching things, we shouldn't be watching. God, if we've been saying things, we shouldn't be saying. God, if we've been telling things, we shouldn't be telling. God, whatever is in our heart, Lord, purify our hearts, God, that we may see what you see. Break our hearts with those things that break your heart, Lord, that we would see what you see and say what you say. God, let people see Jesus in us. Let us talk like Jesus and walk like Jesus and speak like Jesus. God, forgive us for not praying for our neighbors. Forgive us, God, for not witnessing more. Forgive us, God, for not buying the meal of that person in the restaurant that you impressed upon our heart to buy. Forgive us, Lord, for overlooking the poor and the needy. Forgive us, Lord, for not supporting the missionary efforts of this world, of men that are desperate, men and women who are desperate to spread the gospel. God, cleanse us from our own self-righteousness. Cleanse us, God, from our own impurities. Cleanse us, God, from our own minds and our own wicked ways. God, you said, Lord, look inside of me and see if there be any wicked ways in me. God, look inside of me. And God, if there's anything in there that is hindering the love of God from flowing, God, it's the perfect love that is going to cast out the fears and anxieties that we deal with. Let us be so full of the love of God and so full of the love of the Holy Spirit. Let him walk with us and talk with us. God, give us walks with you in the cool of the day like Adam and Eve had, Father. God, let us fall in love with you all over again. God, like the church of Philadelphia, Lord, let us fall in love, brotherly love, God. And God, like the church of Ephesus, let us return to our first love, Father. God, to the point that we felt about you when we first fell in love with you, Lord. Give us that love again. Let us fall so in love with you, we become giddy. Let us fall so in love with you, God, that we're willing to lay down, lay down everything and take up our cross and follow you, Lord. Cleanse us, God. Cleanse us, God, from any narcissistic behaviors. Cleanse us, God, from any self-centeredness. Cleanse us, God, from thinking of ourselves when the world around us is dying, God. I pray, God, that we will be focused on the harvest and we will see the harvest. Bring us revival, Lord, in the land. Bring us revival, Lord, in the land. Now, Lord, I just speak healing over this room right now. God, we're talking about healing our hearts, but God, 
God, I pray, God, that as we cleanse our hearts, that the outflow of that would be cleansing of our bodies, that our bodies would be made whole. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare, Father, right now, that faith will begin to rise in this room. All over this room, Father, that faith will begin to rise. God, we are not just asking for a small things. We are asking for miracles. We are asking for healings and miracles. God, many of us in this room have seen miracles. We have been used of God to pray for miracles. Many of us have laid our hands upon people and seen miracles in their life. God, there are people in this room who have witnessed signs and wonders. They are no stranger to the supernatural ways of Almighty God. I pray, God, for a supernatural invasion of this prayer meeting, a supernatural invasion. Let this be unlike any other prayer meeting we have ever had. But I pray, God, that the power of God would come into this room and wreck us, God. It would come into this room and fill this place with your glory and your presence. God, let our faith reach heaven in the name of Jesus. Let our faith reach heaven. I want everybody that can right now just begin to lift up your hands toward the Lord. Just begin to lift up your hands and worship him. I believe that faith is rising right now. I believe that miracles can happen right here in this atmosphere. But come on right now, just reach up to heaven. Begin to reach your hand toward heaven and declare God's wonders. Begin to declare God's goodness. Father, I declare your healing presence over this room in the name of Jesus. I declare your healing presence over this room in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I declare your healing presence. Holy Spirit, light like a dove in this room. Let us feel your presence in this room. Lord, there are people right now at home on their knees praying. There are people right now stretching their hands toward TV sets, stretching their hands toward their phones around the world, God. People have joined us in this prayer meeting right now. I want you to combine your faith with every other believer right now. Come on. If any two shall agree upon anything, you can have it. God, there are thousands of us right now. God, the ones that are in this room and the thousands online, God, we are joining our faith right now in the name of Jesus. We are coming together in agreement for a moment of miracle. Hallelujah. We are coming together in agreement, believing God that the miracle worker is in the house, is in this room, and we're going to see God's manifested power as we have time and time again. God, I'm believing that symptoms are going to go in Jesus' name. God, I'm not just asking for healings, which are progressive. I'm asking for miracles, which are instant. So, God, we're declaring this in Jesus' name. I want our brother to come here right now, the pastor that's come tonight for, for a miracle in his life. I want you to come right now and just stand right here in the front. Hallelujah. Listen, I want to tell you something, and you know I'm not mean-spirited at all, but I don't need any wannabes in this prayer meeting. If you have faith, you can come. If you don't have faith and you want to watch, why don't you watch from the back? If you'll do that, just watch from the back. But right now, I need some people that believe that God is a miracle-working God. I need some people with the gift of healing, some people that believe God for miracles. And if you've had a miracle, in your life, then you know how to pray for that. I need you standing right here, right now, all over the room. This is not just for the prayer, for the prayer team right now. This is anybody that is believing for miracles. Anybody that is believing for miracles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're declaring it, Father. Yes. Listen, he, our brother wants to say something. Here we go. More than once, I've seen God raise the dead. More than once, and I've been almost 60 years in ministry. I'm here to tell you, whatever it is, if God can raise the dead that disease had killed, oh, yeah. he can heal any disease in the living body of any of his children. You believe his word. He will do what he promises every time. Two weeks ago, I had... A glioblastoma cancer, they said it's terminal. If I did nothing, they said I might have four to six months. I, I made a choice. Do the operation. The doctor got 90%. But listen, God's already told me nine months ago 
He said, we got this. And I know my part of we is to believe that God will do what he said he would do and help my prayer warriors to pray and believe with me for a divine, my divine miracle. Amen. Yes. Listen, when somebody comes for a miracle, they have already touched the hem of his garment. The doctor said he got 90%. We're going to believe that God's going to take that other 10% out right now. And that with a long life, I bless you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, God, we declare healing over my brother's body in Jesus' name. God, I plead the blood of Jesus. God, we curse every cancerous cell in this body. We curse every cancerous cell, every spirit in the name of Jesus that would come against him, God, for this healing. We curse it in the name of Jesus. We speak life. We speak life to these brain cells. We call it forth. It must go in Jesus' name. You have no place. We will not tolerate this in Jesus' name. We're declaring healing. We're declaring healing. Hallelujah. Yes, Father, in the name of Jesus. God, I bless my brother with a long life. I bless him, Father, with a long life. I declare, Father, that what you are doing in this moment, this testimony will be heard. This testimony will be told to the glory of God. To the glory of God. We're declaring, Father, that this testimony will be told. God, and right now, God, as we're laying hands upon him, we pray for every person suffering of cancer that has their hands stretched out right now. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, cancer cells, we curse you in Jesus' name. We come against you in Jesus' name. You must die. We speak death to every cancerous cell, and we speak life into the tissue. We speak life into the tissue that has been destroyed. Every spirit that's come against their minds, you must go in Jesus' name. We plead the blood of Jesus. Jesus over these bodies. We plead the blood of Jesus over this healing. And we declare right now, Father, you said on the cross, it is finished. And we declare right now, it is finished. It is done. And we declare healing in Jesus' name. We declare symptoms are gone. We declare healing in Jesus' name. We declare healing. Yes, Father, we declare healing in Jesus' name. We declare healing in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, this may sound strange, but if you're here and you need healing, lay hands on your own head right now. Just lay hands on your own head. Anybody that needs healing, Father, in the name of Jesus. God, in the name of Jesus, you are our substitute on the cross. We speak healing over the body of Christ. Christ, in Jesus' name, from the top of their head to the soles of their feet, whatever their issue is, we speak healing over it in Jesus' name. We speak healing over the feet and the legs and the back and the throat. We speak healing, Father, over hips, jo hips and joints, Father. We speak healing, Father, over blood disease, God, over high blood pressure, heart disease. In the name of Jesus, you must go. Lungs, you are healed in Jesus' name. Thyroids, you are healed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We call it out in Jesus' name. Sugar diabetes, you are healed in Jesus' name. You are healed in Jesus' name. We declare healing. God, not only did we declare healing, but the effects of healing, Father. In the name of Jesus, Father, whatever has been destroyed, tissue that has been destroyed, be repaired in Jesus' name. Be repaired in Jesus' name. We declare healing, wholeness, health. Hallelujah. We declare healing, wholeness, and health to the body of Christ. We speak it forth. We declare it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We glorify you, Lord, and we praise you, Father. God, we come on. I want you to help me thank God for miracles. God, we thank you for miracles. We thank you for miracles, Lord. 
God, we thank you, Lord, for miracles, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for miracles, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 We thank you, Lord, for miracles. We thank you, Lord, for miracles. God, I thank you for miracles, and I thank you for breakthroughs. I thank you, God. Hallelujah for breakthroughs, God. There are people that have been waiting a long time, but God is breaking through. Things are shifting. Things are changing. In the name of Jesus, we declare it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 We bless you, Lord. God, we speak healing. We speak healing. We speak healing. God, I speak healing over families. I speak healing over marriages. Father, I speak healing over relationships. God, I speak, God, healing over, over wrong body image, Father. God, over negative body image, I speak healing over it, Father. In the name of Jesus, restore your people, Lord. Restore the years that the locusts have taken. Restore the body of Christ in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We're going to pray again, but I want you to hear a testimony. Listen, we just, we just trusted God for miracles. I want you to see a miracle and hear a miracle. I don't want you to just hear about a miracle. I, I, I've invited, I've invited, I love her Louisiana accent, by the way. Her son, Philip, the other night that graduated said he was going to open up a restaurant using his mama's recipes. That's going to be a Cajun restaurant. I can tell you because this woman is one of the best Louisiana cooks you'll ever find. But she's not just walking in miracles. I mean, not just walking in, in favor. She has, she has a list of miracles. So you can go as far back as you want. You can tell about the time we prayed together recently and what God has done since then. However you want to tell this, I want you to tell it. Okay. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. I just want to thank everyone here. I just, we just love coming here. Y'all are, are a blessing. We love, we love uh, Dr. B, and we are blessed to have you. Thank you, thank you. And thank you, Jesus. Okay, so let's start with when we went to your office that day. The whole month of March, really starting in June, June, July, I mean, no, not June, I'm sorry, January, February, March, we were in despair. I mean, really, everything, every time we turned around, something was happening. Something big happened, you know, all the time. Financially, uh, we, medically, I mean, just... All of us were attack we were under attack. It was demonic attacks. So we made an appointment <laughs> to Dr. B. The Lord said, go talk to Dr. B. So we made an appointment, went to his office on March 31st. So he prayed and anointed us with all. We, we talked to him for a long time. Felt really good when we left. He said, well, come tonight to church. So we went tonight, that night, that Thursday night. And then... Y'all all prayed over me. I'm sure y'all remember that. Well, I was in excruciating pain. We walked in his office. I was walking with a cane as well as my husband. We were both walking in his office with a cane. <laughs> and everybody knows my husband and how, you know, he's walked through. He was paralyzed last year, and now he's walking with a cane. But he's walking. You know, he's walking. Yes. And now, and he don't. Sometimes he doesn't even walk with a cane, you know, bless his heart. He's, I mean, he's a walking miracle too. But anyway, I was walking with a cane because I fell three times, actually twice on March 17th, back to back on the same day. I don't know why I fell. I was just walking down the hall at a school. There was nothing, there was nothing around. Nothing was around me. It's like I tripped over the air. I mean, and when I tripped, I hit, I mean, hard. And those, those floors, it's, it's concrete, concrete floor. And I mean, I, I hit hard, I, and I fell on my left knee, and I caught myself like this. And so I got up, and I, I was like dizzy. So I, I was subbing that day, because I'm, I'm a teacher, but I, I subbed for this last year. So I was at Candy's Creek. I went to my class, and then I started to have my head was starting to hurt, and everything started to hurt, my leg. And so I said, well, I guess I need to go have an x-ray. <laughs> guess I need to go to the hospital, because my head was really hurting bad. So we went to the hospital, did all that. They didn't do much. They took, they took x-rays. <laughs> I mean, that's about all. They sent me home, didn't give me nothing for pain medicine or anything, didn't give me a brace for my leg. I was having excruciating pain with my leg. But anyway, so that day, we, so we, y'all prayed. This leg, I went through excruciating. When I say excruciating, it was like, it was, it was very painful for three weeks. Because this happened on March the 17th. And then the following, then two weeks went past, and then I was at 
our Sunday church and I almost fell again. The third time, another attack. It really was another attack, but it, it church. But I caught myself, but I caught myself on this leg again. So it was like I could hardly walk. I had to sit down the whole service. I barely could walk to the car. So it, it was like the enemy was trying to bring it back, even though it was getting better. So anyway. And what it, they don't realize is this was your only income. You'd been trying to sell your house for how long? Since November. So they, you know, how houses are selling. They had a house for sale. They just wouldn't sell. And now right. with her being injured. I couldn't work. Now they have no income. At all. So they were I having financial crisis physical crisis all of these injuries continue injuries you might remember her husband last year was in a wheelchair when they would come for prayer he was in a couldn't walk at all so keep going with the story this is good so then on so when we left here that night which was march 31st the next very next day there was a and i'm, I'm not gonna go into details just to do with my son but it was a it was a major thing went on at cleveland high with him so it was another big demonic attack. But so the enemy didn't like what happened Thursday night. So then he took it out on my son and he found a way to creep in, but we, we straightened all that out. But anyway, that was another big traumatic thing for us. We got it straight though. The Lord took care of that. Yep. But, and, and he is, he's graduating and all this stuff. Cause it was, we didn't know if he was gonna, if they were gonna let him walk or not. He was gonna get a diploma, but we didn't know because of how they, just how they treated him again it was the enemy so anyway so I left here so y'all prayed over me right so I left here not walking with the cane that night that was on what I said March 31st yep yep okay, that so, was the beginning of the the miracle and there's right. lots more that happened lots more so then I went get an MRI I had you know they ordered it but it takes forever to get it you know so I finally got there and, and it was already healed right but it showed I had a hairline fracture in this knee it was fractured. I mean, it just that just don't go away. So, so let me let, let's see if we get this right. So, so God heals you, then you get the report later that He had healed you from a hairline fracture in the knee exactly. that they had missed. It wow! Show, it showed it was there, but it was gone. Yeah. Right. So it shows that it was there, but right. now it's gone. And it was gone. Yeah. No and no. and God worked it out for Philip. Turn that around, Turn that issue at school. Around. And how yes. about the income part? What happened and the there? The income uh, part. <laughs> so I got, I, I got a call from, from Whirlpool. This all happened in May, by the way. In May, all of these things. We, we got a contract on the house on, um, let's see, April 22nd. Yeah, April 22nd. We, got, we signed on an offer, you know, a purchase agreement on our house on the 22nd. So of this April. is the same house that hadn't sold for months. Yeah, this for is months. after the prayer within a right. month. The house sells. Because we this was it was March 31st. So from March yep. 31st through and then April 22nd the house was sold. So that's what less than 3 weeks. Yeah. You know, April 1st through the 22nd, 20, 22 days to be exact. Then the house we had a purchase agreement, right? Okay, so then I got a call in May, I don't know like second week of May about uh, I, actually, I think it was the same day that they did all three inspections were done on the same day. That was ordered. It, it, ended on, it landed on the same day. And I think it was May 17th to be exact. Or I forget the dates, but. You're close enough. It was, yeah. <laughs> all three inspections, I got the call from Whirlpool. So now Whirlpool, I'm, I'm going to be working for Whirlpool. They hired me. I'm a teacher, but, you know, I'm going to try something different. It's an at-home job. Okay, so. God healed you. God healed your husband. God turned it around for Philip. He sold the house in 22 days, and God gave you a brand new job. Yes. Wow. Yes. yes. There you go. And, but I would like to add something. Now, that didn't come without a lot of prayer. I want everybody to understand this, because I got on it. I started praying. After all of these falls, you know, Psalms 91 says, you know, that she's, you won't stumble. Stumble or fall, if you look in the, uh, the Passion trans Translation. I started reading that prayer twice a day. There you go. Out loud in the morning because he says to pray in the morning. He'll give his angels charge over and, you. That's right. To that's keep right. you in all your ways. A thousand shall fall on one side and ten thousand on the right hand. But nothing right. shall come nigh of you. That's right. That's <laughs> right. That's and right. we will not stumble far. So I started speaking that over all of us and over our finances and, and over everything. And just and then, and then Perry's, his, his three o'clock hour <laughs> CD. <laughs> 
I know to pray between the hours of, what is it, four, three, and six? Three and six. The four, that's right, the four o'clock hours. The fourth watch. The fourth yes. watch. Because the heavens are open during that time. <laughs> Hallelujah. So Perry Stone has taught me how to pray. Amen. <laughs> yes, indeed. So praise God. And then I want to tell you all about it. I'm going to just, I'm going to make this short. In 2010. I don't believe it. But go ahead. <laughs> I'm teasing you. That's my sense of humor. <laughs> no, go right ahead. I was hit by an 18 wheel in a dump truck in December of 2010, December 17th, broadside. Wow. So this is when miracles started for me. That was a big, when they exploded on me first, they hit me broadside as I sat at a red light. It happened before the light turned green. And so my window shattered, fire blew in the car. It singed my hair just a little bit. It passed through my body, melted the dash. Did not, I had no, no, there was no evidence of flames wow. on my body except for my hair. Just a little bit at the top was singed, that's it. And I had to make a decision whether I was going to crawl through or drive through. So I drove through the flames, put on the side of the road, and then my eyewitness was the chief of detectives that saw the wow. whole thing. Wow. <laughs> and he explained to me what happened. He said, you were engulfed in flames because you when you drove through, he said, we thought it was a crazy person driving through the flames because they did not see me. So I was actually engulfed in flames, which wow. I didn't know this. At the time, my door didn't open. I tried to get out. It wouldn't open, and wow. I went to accelerate. The car didn't move wow. because the car had a feature. It was, it's a Honda CRV. It threw it in neutral. Wow. So I had to put it in drive in order to drive through. We still own that car. It did not total. Wow. They replaced the whole left side of that car. I need to get we the car We still drive like that. that car. <laughs> yes. And then he healed me 14 months later. I was healed 14 months later of all the pain I went through with my lower back. Wow. So I could just go on and on, Listen, you know? <laughs> guys, you just heard a, you heard a walking miracle right here. Can you give God praise? Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, tonight has been a night of believing for miracles, and I know that many of you that are uh, watching, uh, you are also joining with us every week, from really from around the world. We get prayer requests from around the whole world and thousands of people that join with us. But you know, the greatest miracle that will ever happen is when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And we have people that watch us all the time that, you know, we take for granted the fact that someone's logged on to a prayer meeting, that they know Jesus Christ. But we actually get emails from people that say, you know, I don't know how to be saved. And, um, you know, there's a lot of people that have grown up even in religious environments where they may say something like, I'm Catholic, and I'm not saying if you're Catholic, you're not saved. But there's some people that because they were baptized as a baby and they're Catholic, they've just never been born again. So I want to just close this out as we try to do every week by just telling you how easy it is to be born again. You know, being saved is not difficult. It's as easy as A, B, C. A, admit that you've sinned. Believe, B, believe that Jesus died for your sins, and C, confess that Jesus Christ is your Lord. How many of you came into the family that same way, right? You just admitted that you'd sinned, believed that Jesus died for your sin. Now, I want to tell you something. When you say that, that's the beginning. That's not the end. After you, after you ask Christ into your heart, then you need to get discipled. You need to get a Bible. You need to get in a, in a prayer group. You need to get in a discipleship group and let someone help you grow as a Christian. That's your next step. But we want to lead you on your first step tonight. So if you've never asked Christ into your heart, as we pray this prayer, I'm going to ask you to pray it with us and join the family of God tonight. It's the greatest journey you'll ever be on in your life. So I'm going to pray this. I'm going to ask this whole room to pray this with me so those who are praying uh, for the first time can, can feel comfortable praying with us. Let's pray it together. Father in heaven, I admit that I've sinned. I admit that I've sinned. But I believe. But I believe that Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ died for my sins. Died for my sins. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Live inside of me. Live inside of me. And help me to live for you. And help me live for you. I now confess. I now confess that Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life. Is the Lord of my life. And with your help. And with your help, I will live for you. I will live for you for the rest of my life. For the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, I pray. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Now, can you welcome all the new members of the family of God? Amen. 
If you have just accepted Christ, or if you know of someone that has, we would like to give you a free gift. All you have to do is go to islw.org. We have a whole free course for you. You've got, you're going to have 10 lessons and a booklet. It's called, um, um, somebody remember the name of our new, our new Believer's Handbook. I wrote it, and I shouldn't remember it. I'm the guy that wrote the book. It's called the New Believer's Handbook. So just go there, and uh, you'll, get the, you'll get the handbook, and then you'll also get 10 video lessons that just help you get on your discipleship journey. So if you know someone that just came to the Lord, then I want you to also tell them about that, isow.org. Go to, go to the place where it says Browse Courses. Go to the bottom. There's a free section there, and that's where you'll find that, that journey, that, that book to get you on your journey. May God bless you. Let me bless you before we sign off today. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Go in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today here at the Global Prayer Center where we are praying for you as we pray for the world, the country, and many other prayer requests that come into us each week. If you would like to be a partner with us or help us in this task, we have a way that you can give. You can go to perrystone.org and donate there, or here on your screens, there is a place where you can give, and that will help to continue to support the Global Prayer Center. It helps take care of the cost of the facility, the staff, and all of the live streaming so that we can continue to bring this to you and to the nations every single week. Thank you for joining one of the largest and most powerful prayer meetings in the world today. Thank you for being a part of this. God bless you and we love you.